this is Jeff Harvey from Down Under Visa. We are Australian registered migration agents here in the Philippines, Manila, and we specialise in doing visas for couples. This is Australians who are involved with, married with, living with, etc. Uh, primarily, uh, we deal with ladies from the Philippines. We've been based here for the last 15 years. Um, but we also do partner visas and tourist visas, child visas, etc. We do for uh, those who are involved with ladies from Thailand and from Vietnam and from Cambodia. Now, if you are interested in what we have to say here, then please do a free assessment. It costs you nothing, take you five minutes. Uh, you'll see the details at the end and uh, we'll have a look at your case and we will give you an honest assessment as to whether we can help you or not. Uh, we're always painfully honest, we're well known for that. Um, if we can help you, we'll tell you, we'll tell you how we can help you, tell you what the costs are, approximately how long it will take, etc. Okay, so please enjoy. Hello all, this is Jeff Harvey from Down Under Visa. Now we are registered migration agents. That means that we are registered with MARA, Migration Agents Registration Authority, which is part of the Department of Home Affairs, which is what the Immigration Department calls itself these days. They change names every few years for some reason. This is what it's currently called. Uh, we are qualified um, to manage visa applications for Australians um, who have met and fallen madly in love with ladies from different countries. In our case, this, that's, this is the area we specialise in. We don't do student visas, work visas, etc. Okay, we do visas for loving couples. We have an interest in that. We have the patience and we have the experience and most certainly have the runs on the board. And we specialise in those applications from the Philippines from Thailand, from Vietnam, and from Cambodia. Now, just a little brief thing about each country. Now, um, we're not matchmakers. I do not promote <laughs> falling madly in love with anybody from a particular country. That job is entirely up to you. Every now and then I get a, a, an email from somebody saying, oh, can you find me, can you find me a girl? No, can you find me a husband in Australia? No, most definitely not. Uh, we don't do that, okay? Now, Philippines, my Philippines. Well, I guess this has been traditionally, ah, I guess probably, yeah, probably since, you know, the Americans were based here. You know, when they were busily fighting wars throughout uh, Southeast Asia, uh, and they had the military bases here. You look at old videos and old photos and films of you know, Manila in the 1950s and 1960s and every second person seems to be wearing an American military uniform. The place was full of American military and they met and fell madly in love with the local ladies and that, that's, that's continued. And um, my wife is Filipina and I actually live in the Philippines. Got a house full of adopted Filipino kids who I absolutely adore. Um, it's a culture which seems to, it, it sort of seems to, they're pretty easy going, they're pretty relaxed, they're pretty, you know, they're a nice, happy, sweet people. The ladies are very committed to traditional marriage, uh, traditional marriage values, so they don't have legal divorce here. Every now and then they try to uh, propose doing it, it doesn't happen. Um, okay, so, and everyone speaks English here. It's a Christian country too. I think 86% or something of the population consider themselves Christian, most are Catholic. Um, and uh, yeah, seem to, seem to get on remarkably well with, with Aussies and, and seem to fit in nicely with that laid back culture. Okay, however, you can meet somebody absolutely anywhere, especially with various you know, chat groups and what have you on the internet. Sometimes people aren't even intending, they don't go out and say, oh, I'm going to find our wife from this country. 
So they're not looking for anybody at all. I just happened to meet somebody online, fall madly in love with them, and they happen to be from a different country. That's the most common scenario these days. In the days of writing letters, as who? <laughs> well, <laughs> I started off writing letters to my wife, but that was, we were married for 20 years, so that, that's you know, a bit of ancient history these days. Um, most people are doing all their chatting through Facebook Messenger and various other things. Okay, uh, other countries, Thailand. We do a lot of visas from Thailand. I suppose once upon a time, you know, people used to say, well, I don't want to meet somebody from Thailand because they don't speak English. Well, since COVID, we've been traveling a lot. Uh, we've been to Thailand several times and um, seem to speak pretty good English generally. Uh, I didn't find anybody who I couldn't talk to, whether that was in shops or restaurants or you know street stalls or whatever it happened to be. They seem to, you know, they seem to speak pretty good English. Um, and they were, they were a friendly lot, they were a sweet lot. Lots of very, very pretty ladies there, I don't mind saying. I'm happily married, but I, I have eyes. It's obvious that there were pretty ladies there. So, if you meet somebody from Thailand, real good. Um, Vietnam and Cambodia, I guess they're probably a bit of a, yeah, the world's best kept secret. Um, you know, for a long time, you know, with the Vietnam War and everything that happened after that, people didn't go to Vietnam, but, oh, look, the world has changed. You know, communist is still a communist, well, Vietnam is still a communist country, but, you know, it's not like the days of China where people were waving little red books and wearing green Mao suits and what have you, the same as in, uh, in Vietnam. It's a very friendly, easy, open country. You need a visa to go there, but you goodness, you order it online and it, it, it cost you very, I can't remember, 35 bucks or something. Um, takes about two days and you get the visa grant through. Um, you know, it's not a difficult place to get around in. I, you know, I spent time in Ho Chi Minh City. Also spent some time in Da Nang, which is sort of a resort town a bit further north. Um, that's, a, that's a very foreigner friendly place. I mean, the whole country is there. People, people are nice. Um, beautiful girls. Um, difference between Cambodia and, and Vietnam. They tend to be rather white in Vietnam and in Cambodia. They, they're more on the, they're more on the, on, on the um, tan brown side. Um, but, you know, <laughs> what, whatever, they're still beautiful ladies. Uh, Cambodia, my goodness, I have to say that was a, a delightful surprise. Been there you know, about four times or, or something uh, since COVID. That was an absolutely delightful surprise. Now that's a country that was, you know, 1975, the country was, was, was I mean, the expression decimated was a, a, a nice Roman thing where to punish troops, they would kill one out of 10 and they get the, they get the other nine to kill him, which was pretty charming. That's what decimating means. It did worse in Cambodia where the Khmer Rouge killed like one in three of, of the population. And, you know, a third of the population were murdered and oh, I won't go into details, it's quite brutal. Um, but they're actually the sweetest, most the most forgiving people ever. I asked to a guy in the killing fields, I said, what happened to the, you know, the Khmer Rouge soldiers, because they spent time in refugee camps in Thailand. Uh, what happened when they came back? Did people treat them badly? I said, no, we gave them. No, seriously. I said, yeah, that they didn't have a choice, and we knew that. So we welcomed them back and, and they just fitted into society. You wouldn't even know who they are now because nobody particularly cares. Uh, they're very gentle people. I've got, well, the man who does my IT work is, uh, he's American, but he's been in Cambodia for about four years now. He says he's never heard a Khmer person raise their voice ever. They just don't. They're just very, very sweet, very friendly. You you wave to somebody in the street and say, it's not like Korea where everybody you know, like that. Um, you see anybody in the street as you walk in passing, you go, hello, and they go, hello. 
Um, very, very friendly people. Kids, kids are smile and wave at you, and uh, very, 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 very sweet. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely human beings. Um, I mean, I can well imagine. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very happily married, but I can certainly well imagine anybody falling in love with, you know, any of these ladies. Uh, the Thai ladies are sort of charming and cheeky. The, the Cambodian ladies are, are very gentle and very sweet. They, the Vietnamese are, are well, I don't know what the word is. There's, there's probably a little bit more on the sophisticated side. They seem to be generally a fairly intelligent lot. Um, they seem to be mad keen on learning English. Again, that's really not an issue there. I, I didn't find it, you know, I didn't find it hard to speak to anybody, even with my dreadful Australian accent. It seemed to do just fine. But anyway, th those are the countries that we deal with, and uh, primarily. Um, so yeah, if you do, you, you meet, fall madly in love with somebody from there. If your relationship is young and you're not ready to make that solid commitment and you want a temporary visa, like a tourist visa, come and see us. They're not simple, easy things to get. They're refusing them left, right and centre at the moment. I think about, well, even in normal times, about one in four gets refused. And at the moment, I would suspect it's probably higher than that. So yeah, if a temporary visa, tourist visa, see us. If you're at a stage where you're ready to commit to a partner visa, see us. Please go to www.downundervisa.com. Okay, www.downundervisa.com. Now, and you can do a free assessment form on that. It'll take you about five minutes, and we need the information because we can't just. Uh, otherwise, we can turn around and say yes, we'll help you. Let me find out. Ah, no, we can't because of something which is in that little questionnaire there. Take you five minutes. We'll come back to you after that and tell you, well, if we can help you. If we can't, we're going to tell you. Rest assured, uh, nearly every day we tell somebody we can't help them. Um, that's what we'll do. And if we can help you, we'll tell you what we suggest for you, uh, what it'll cost, how, how long it will take. And then if you want to go ahead, uh, we would be delighted to help you because there's nothing we love better than bringing couples together. That's our calling in life. We have, goodness me, I wish I knew how many thousands of couples are in Australia now, happy as pigs in mud, um, because down on the visa help them get through these hurdles in the early days. Somebody emailed me the other day, it's been 10 years. They've got two kids together, as well as two kids from existing relationships. So they were, and said they're going great guns. They're really happy. Four kids there. I'm hoping they'll do a testimonial video for us. I've asked them, it would be really nice. We see a lot of, we get a lot of testimonial videos when somebody is, you know, they've just got together. They've, I say they've just had the visa grant and they want to say how happy they are. But my goodness, you know, there are those who, you know, we have couples who, you know, 13, 14 years and still very happy and um, still tell everybody, uh, see down on the visa, they'll take care of you. Okay, I hope we can, I hope we can help you. I hope we can take care of you too. Thank you.